o'clock. We are over tallness again. Look, look, that flag. That's not ours. It's Norwegian. Let's go down. Our garrison headquarters flying a Norwegian flag. That's right, a Norwegian flag. Suggest you investigate immediately. sign of life. No smoke coming from the chimneys. There can be fire without smoke. <coughs> What happened here? The cannery. I built it. Yes, I built it. With beautiful machines stamped out on millions of cans. Casper Torgerson, 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 Torgerson. I own half the bolts. Now I own them all. I own everything. <laughs> Hopelessly insane. Get rid of it. Mine. Mine. The landing party will be divided into four groups. Each group will scour a section of the town. When they have accomplished that, they will assemble at a hotel. Yes, sir. Lieutenant, I would like to dictate a report. 
Let your servicer help him. Town of Trollness, October 28, 1942. The former German garrison, commanded by Hauptmann K O E N I G. <coughs> Hauptmann Kenny. Heil Hitler. Heil Hitler, Herr Major. My credentials. Please sit down, Herr Major. May I offer my apologies for this surprise visit? I am a member of the Führer's bodyguard attached to the Academy of War Sciences in Berlin. Of course, of course, Herr Major. Sit down, don't be alarmed. We have discovered that we obtain our best results by not announcing our arrival beforehand. In Berlin, I have seen the files on all the commands of the central Norwegian coast. You are mentioned as a student of tactics, a good disciplinarian, an officer worthy of promotion. Hammer, you are mean, Sit down. Buddy. It is not what I have come for. Can we be overheard? No, Hammer, you are. I will be brief. I have stopped at every station between here and Trondheim. On one point, there is extreme dissatisfaction both in the general staff and in Berlin. It is the attitude of the Norwegians toward our troops. I've come here to correct it. I want all the available information concerning your town. Facts, figures, etc. This is Trollness. Main industry, fishing. The cannery. It employs about a uh, hundred men and women. A few shopkeepers, a few professionals. In the hills, a few scattered farms. Total population, a little under 800 persons. Against them, our German garrison of 150 men. Well-equipped, well-seasoned troops. This hotel is our headquarters. Breastworks have been put up, trenches, dug, machine guns are scattered all over the town. I can defend this town against anything, except an attack by sea. A revolt would be crushed within an hour. I must compliment you on your thoroughness, Hauptmann Kearney. Thank you, Herr Major. I have been working on a plan every night since I've been here. It's not just a plan for this miserable town alone, but a master plan for all occupied territories. If Berlin accepts this You've plan... you sent it to Berlin? Yes, I have. And I expect an answer by the next vote. If they accept it, I hope I shall be transferred to the Russian front, preferably. You don't like it here, Hauptmann Kearney? I am a soldier. It's one thing to fight soldiers. Those are ghosts. Then there's trouble here, too. Nothing you can put your finger on. Once in a while, a fire breaks out. A boat is sunk. A wire is cut, a shipment of fish is spoiled, the kettle boils. It's clear this town is no different from any others. Yes, especially of late. The underground newspaper keeps the people excited and stirred up with their silly tales of commando raids, guerrilla warfares, our losses in Russia. After all, I can hardly be expected to take... I have carried out all military regulations to the letter, blackout every night after curfew, precautionary searches... I'm sure you have. One thing more. My stay here will be brief, a few days at most. I shall want a list of all the troublemakers in this town. <laughs> I would have to give you the name of every man, woman and child. The leaders, do you know who they are? Every one of them. We begin right here in the hotel, right where my soldiers are quartered. The woman downstairs, the innkeeper. Her father was shot as a hostage when we first took over the town. She steals army food from the commissariat and distributes it in the village. I close my eyes to that because she's very efficient otherwise. I took the liberty of fixing your chair. You have a habit of tilting it back and I noticed that the legs were too weak. Try it. Don't be afraid, I'm a good carpenter. You always have flowers on the table. My dead wife loved flowers. You bear such a strong resemblance to her. I'm busy. I have work to do. 
Yes, I know. Too much for a woman. Well, this could be a fine hotel. It needs a man around to fix things. I am a good carpenter. You're a German. Now, for the rest of them, here in the town. There is Jensen, the shoemaker. He's sly, he bears watching. Solvi Bratigor, the baker's widow. Her husband was shot, but she carries on his work against us. Peterson, the butcher. He will run amok someday. Old man Mortensen, the tailor. His son was arrested in Oslo. He is bitter. Lars Molken, he runs the general store. An old fool, but he's useful to them for errands. Karen Stenskart, very active, very dangerous. Daughter of the only doctor in town, Martin Stenskart. Where are you going? To Gunnarbroga. Karen, I forbid it. What have you against him, father? He's not for you. I think he is. Sooner or later, the Germans will stand him up against a wall, and you along with him. Someone has to fight the Nazis. I'm a good Norwegian, yes. but I want to hold this family together. You're not the only one in Norway that wants that. Good night, father. A few farmers, they are not very important. In the cannery, they are all against us. One with us. The owner, of course. <laughs> Who is the leader among these rebels? A man called Brogge, Gunnar Brogge. A fisherman about uh, 30. Served in the Norwegian army when we first came in. Head of the fishermen's union, when they had one. <laughs> Why don't you make a rest? If it comes to an open rebellion, I can assure you, Herr Mayor, within 10 minutes. We're 150 against 800. We could be 150 against 8,000. 80,000. We have guns, and they are afraid to die. This man Brogge, where does he live? Here, on the wharf, in this shack. I can sail the coast to England blindfolded. The moon is bright tonight. They won't see me. Gunnar, maybe, maybe you could wait. For what? For another night, a darker one. I've had my fill of waiting. All right, then go, now. Karen, you think this is easy for me? I can't stand it here any longer. More than two years now of the Nazi without striking a blow. Other Norwegians have gone to England. They're doing something, fighting. But you've been doing things. Everyone here depends on you. Yes. Gunnar, how long? Gunnar, when? Will we get the arms, Gunnar? And we wait. And they never come. So you leave us. I must. You leave me. Go now, or I shall hold you. Traumas. In stocks at the revolt. What? The revolt in stocks. How? When? Gunnar, I walked here. Talk? Yeah, bullet here. Oh. Karen, take him 
to Osterholm's farm. It's not far. Colonel, I can't walk anymore. Then crawl. Did you hear that bugle? It means Kenick must have gotten the news from Stocksund. They'll send out patrols. They'll search every house in the village for arms. This is the first house they'll come to. under the wharf until they leave. Stay in the water, then use the rope up. Hammer, please, try to hold on a little longer. Open up in there. Open up in there. We have orders to search the place. All right. What's this for? That? Oh, I fish down there when it's stormy and I'm afraid to go out. All right, hurry up there. You too. Fixing my net, you banged so hard on the door, it startled me and I cut myself. Now, with your permission, I'd like to go to a doctor before I bleed to death. Searching every house, Anna. No, they had no right to search this house. They're not searching your brother's house. Oh, I'm sorry, Anna. I didn't mean to say that. Anna, you'd better go upstairs and go to bed. It's after nine o'clock. Marty, it's just I want them to treat you with respect. You're a doctor. Doctors should be treated with respect. Yes, Anna, yes, thank you. Hold well, it, take Mrs. Ten's guide upstairs. It's after nine o'clock. Oh, after nine o'clock. The old days we used to sit up till eleven, sometimes twelve. Well, Holden, tomorrow we'll have to give this house a thorough cleaning. I hope that lamp the German throat can be mended. It's a beautiful. What do you want? The man is on his way to Newt Osterholm's farm. He's badly hurt. Who is he? A Norwegian. Bloggy. Why don't you let me alone? You're the only doctor in town. It is my duty to heal the sick. I go with you only because I am a doctor. Just a little ways now. I can't go any farther. Send my daughter on a mission like this, maybe to her death. Dr. Stensgaard, please. We're all as worried as you are.
shots, are you all right? You're wet, you're shivering, you're cold. Father, that man's in agony. You're wasting time. You must change your clothes, Karen. You'll be sick. Good, have some dry clothes for you. in no condition to talk. You must be quiet. Quiet all the night. Will he live? I don't know. What are you doing? I'm putting him to sleep. To sleep? Supposing he doesn't come out of it? Then let him die in peace. Hammer, listen to me. Are you listening? This is a human being, brother. I'll ask questions. You answer. Skin's burned off his face. It's agony for him to move his lips. How did the revolt start? We got arms. They got arms. I've known you all my life as kind, decent people. Hammer, how did you get the arms? He's going to sleep. I could kill you for this. Hammer, you've got to hold on. How did you get the arms? Hammer? Hammer, are you sure? Yes. Sure. I'm sure. Sure. Did you hear that? Did you hear what he said? We're going to get arms from the British. He said he was sure. Arms, at last. God help us. God help us all. We said goodbye on these steps. Will there be one more morning, Gunnar? We must make arrangements to get Hammer across the border into Sweden. Before he goes, we must hold a meeting in the church. Receiving the arms, the whole town be with us. They'll be with us. They'll follow you. Thanks. All right, good. I'm through crying now. Karen, I gave you many reasons for wanting to go to England. I don't care now why you wanted to go. All I care is that you're staying. But there was one reason I didn't give you. Yes. You. I worried about you. I was afraid that if anything happened to you, I. I might lose my head. Then I wouldn't be of much use anymore. But now I stay. Now I've got to stay. Karen, if we're going to fight, we have to be like steel. Yes, good. Call us some more butter, please. There isn't any more, ma'am. There won't be any more till the day after tomorrow. Good morning, Mother. Good morning, Father. Good morning, Karen. Good morning, darling. How pretty she looks. She slept well. Wonderfully, Mother. Oh, I'm so glad you weren't here last night when the Germans came. I was visiting the pastor's wife. She's not feeling very well. 
Well, you must have stayed late. I didn't hear you come in. Did you hear her, Martin? No, no, I didn't. I'll help you straighten out the house, Mother. Yes, yes, this house must be straightened out. This house must look as pretty as you do. <laughs> Isn't she sweet? Darling, I had a dream. I had a wonderful dream. I dreamt things were like they used to be. I'd made a great big supper, and we sat around the table talking, laughing. Your father drank a little bit too much, fell asleep just the way he used to do. And Uncle Casper told stories about how he worked his way up in the world. And you were playing the piano, and Johan was singing. Wasn't that a beautiful dream? Yes, Mother. Darling, that wasn't a dream. That's the truth. That's just the way it's going to be. Johan's coming home. Johan's coming home. Well, aren't you glad? Yes, Mother. I got the letter this morning. I must have read it 20 times. Uh, no, no, it isn't in my pocket. It's upstairs. I'll go and get it. I'll read it to you. I didn't even know he was coming until your mother got the letter this morning. I didn't send for him. Who did? Your uncle. Birds of a feather. Helen. Johann is your brother. In Oslo in 1940, when the Germans came, he was one of the first. He didn't know what he was doing. He knew. His whole world was crumbling. He was bewildered. I've seen men stood up against a wall with the Germans. They had more to lose than he did. Wives, children. Their world was crumbling, too. They weren't bewildered. You're not all strong. There are some of us that are weak. But he comes, what will you do? The villagers of Tronus are his countrymen. They'll be his judges. They don't have to know. For I must everything in the world be either black or white. Because that's the way the world is these days. You and me have changed. Men repent. Why don't you wait and see for yourself? Let your mother see him once more. If he doesn't come home now, she probably never will again. Would it be better if she were to find out? Keep that problem. We've kept everything else. Helen, let her dream come true. There are so few dreams left to do. Poor father. Poor father. There were many good things in the old life. Don't tear up everything by the roots. Maybe when this is over, we will all want to pick up where we left off. Karen, please. Two years is a long time. A man can change. Let him stay here in peace. Let him feel that there is still a home for him to come to. That there is still a place where people love each other. Father, I say this for your sake, for his sake. If you can still stop him from coming, do it. Father, promise me you'll try. All right, I'll try. come here to see me in the middle of the day. A busy man. I have troubles of my own. Well, whatever it is, come on, say it and get it over with. Casper, why did you send for Johann? Because I need him. He should stay in Oslo and finish his education. <laughs> why do you lie to yourself? He hasn't been near a classroom in almost two years. That's a fact. I'm a man who deals in facts. Casper, if he comes here, there'll be trouble. No trouble. Johann's a smart boy. He understands the new order. You will write him. You will tell him not to come home. You will tell him to stay where he is. You will tell him to go back to school. Tell your daughter. It's too late to write him. He's on the boat. He'll be here Sunday. When he gets here, I don't want you to get him mixed up. Your daughter doesn't want me to get him mixed up. I want you to let him alone. Your daughter wants me to let him alone. If anything happens, I'll hold you responsible. Why is Karen so worried about his coming here? This is a peaceful village. Or maybe it isn't. Maybe there's something going on. Something you ought to tell your brother-in-law about. Well, well, well. Facts. Give me facts. I'm a man who deals in facts. I can't understand him. You're an educated man, a clever man, a man who's always been willing to take advantage of every opportunity that came along. And now, when the greatest opportunity of a lifetime comes along, you flounder like a fish out of water. <laughs> what is it? 
You want to be a patriot? Well, it's men like us who are the real patriots of Norway. Shut your fat evil mouth! The polite doctor shouts. The cultured gentleman raises his voice. <laughs> What's the matter, Martin? Holding out for a bigger price? Uh, Hartman Koenig. Good morning, Dr. Stenskart. Harold Torgerson. Good morning, sir. Good morning. It is exactly 11. Uh, everything is arranged. The men are waiting for you. Excellent, Herr Torgerson. Excellent. <laughs> Did you hear what he said? Excellent, Herr Torgerson. And you slapped me. There have been incidents in this cannery in direct defiance of the official order of the German High Command. Let me remind you how the order reads. The economic life of a country occupied by German troops is to continue. Everyone is to remain at his position and continue with his work as before. Any acts to the contrary are sabotage. I have been lenient heretofore. If there are any more accidents, if there are any more attempts to spoil the fish, such as making them unfit for consumption by kerosene or other means. Men will be chosen at random and tried for sabotage by a military court. I will impose stricter measures on the town, forbid public gatherings, close the church, Tonight at the church. fishing will be forbidden, the cannery will be shut down. We got arms from the British. We were told to wait for the day the entire coast was armed. We couldn't. We were betrayed. Some quizzling must have told the Germans the guns are buried in our garden. They came with searching parties. Then it started. House to house. The men defending themselves. What else could they do? Possession of arms meant death anyway. It was like a bloodbath. They offered us a truce on their terms. <laughs> we told them to go to the devil. <laughs> situated. How many of you? 104. One machine gun and 2,000 rounds for the rifles. We were facing them with our backs to the water. On the other flank, we had a little hill which we could keep pretty well covered. That's how we stood when the attack started. About that time was when young Olaf Brander tried to launch the boat. Olaf Brander was a friend of my son, the one who was arrested in Oslo for cutting wires. He called to the women and children to get in the boats, and he'd set them adrift until it was over. But they couldn't make it. The Germans raked the wharf with machine gun fire. The women and children? Most of them were lying on pilings under the wharf. You could hear them crying. What happened to the women and children? Those that tried to run for the boats were shot. <laughs> no time for tears. Be quiet. Go on. We fought until dark and held them off. About nine o'clock, their firing stopped. We sat back and began to talk over whether or not we could make the boats in the dark. There had to be a way out. Then the planes came. They sent down flares and then dived. Houses started bursting into flames. First one, then another. The whole fjord was yellow. Even the trees were on fire. I guess that's all. Stocksun was a nice town. Once I was going to open a butcher shop in Stocksun, but my wife was against it. <laughs> oh, excuse me, I, I didn't mean to be funny. Hammer has told us that the English are delivering arms up and down the coast. We'll get them here. You've heard what happened in Stocksun. That may also happen here. Oh, no. Not if you plan your strategy. Lars Malkin may be right. That's another question. The question now is, do we agree to accept the arms? Are we together when they come? Each man should speak his mind here, now. You say the whole coast will be armed? Yes. Then what is there to speak about? 
Is there anyone here who can't see what that means? No, this is not the way. Every man must speak his mind. Pastor, what do you say? I say it's wrong. I say it's against God's will. I say it's murder. They slaughtered us in the streets, and you talk about murder. Yeah. Wait, wait, you'll all have a chance to speak. Let him have his say. Believe me, I understand. But do not infect us. It would only make it worse. By him who died on the cross, I swear I am no coward. But in my very soul, I know this is wrong. You are a man of God, Pastor. But in these times, you have... In these times, I must cry out all the louder. How can you trust a man who talks like that? God have mercy on you. We pay you a good wage, 300 kroner a month, and now you turn on us. I am not turning on you. He has a right to say what he thinks. That he has. Go on, Pastor. No, I've said my share. And you, Dr. Stensgaard? No, not now. Then it's settled. No, not yet. I don't agree with the pastor, but there are doubts in my mind. You doubt? When my son in Oslo was arrested for cutting wires. To the devil with your son in Oslo. You're a traitor. I'm a farmer. If I lose my farm, there must be a reason for it. The sacrifice of one poor village. What will it accomplish? What sacrifice? What are you giving up? Your life? Maybe they'll take that from you, whether you fight or not. Your farm? It isn't yours anyway until you fight for it. Your peace? What peace is there when a body of troops can come in the middle of the night and arrest you as a hostage, to be shot for something you never did or never even thought of? Like my father. To live in constant fear, to have blackings at your windows, to talk in whispers, to have guards at your church doors. Do you have any more objections? All I did was ask a question. A man has a right to ask a question. I'm satisfied with the answer. Sixers Anderson, you are a man for whom we all have respect. You have taught our children, even some of us. We have found you to be wise. Surely in this matter, your wisdom... He's fallen asleep. No, no, I was not asleep. I was thinking what to say when you asked me, and I knew that you would ask me. What can I say to you? How can I advise you? I find now that I have lived more than 70 years, and all I know, I know from books. And in all the books I've read, not one do I remember that gives me an answer. <laughs> Perhaps I read the wrong books. Forgive me if I failed you. All this may prove a point. Vote. Let's have to vote. We are all Norwegians. I love my country as much as you do. You must believe that. What would you have us do, Dr. Stensgaard? Wait. A tidal wave has swept over us. It will recede, and when it does... We'll all be drowned. But ask yourself these questions. Do you want your country ravaged, your homes burned? Do you want your children bombed as they were in Stocksund? Ask your children those questions. All right. Take the vote. All those in favor. Hold on, Gunnar. How do we know the pastor and some others won't betray us? No. Dr. Stenskard won't betray you. He's a good man. I work for him. I know he won't betray you. Excuse me. Thank you, Hilda. Those with us. Olsen's farm tonight. It's too rough on a wounded man. Good luck. Don't worry about me. Just a minute.
What do you want? You want them to hear you in the hotel? Where's the guard? Don't they have one here at night? He's at the back. He'll be around in a minute. Who are you? <coughs> Who's down there? I did not see anybody. I heard voices. Hoffman K. Not now, later. So you're gonna rug it. Lovely night, Miss Tensgard, for running through the woods. Feeling better, Sister Gerd? Good. Now let's get down to business. A dictionary, Oslo edition, 1937. I give it to you now in case we have no opportunity later. Who are you? A British agent. How do we know you speak the truth? You don't. Now, when arms are landed in this village... We fight. Good. No. You wait. No matter what happens, keep your people in check till the whole coast is armed. Beginning tomorrow, you will have a man stationed every night between midnight and four in the morning on the plateau, about half a mile up from the hotel. You must keep a watch out to sea to a point due west to the center of the village. Due west to the center of the village, yes. You will be signaled by a British ship flying 12 miles off coast. And then? You will answer the signals with a light of 20 candle power brilliance. One flash for yes, two for no. Ten seconds between answers. For each word, we will flash two numbers. The first designates page number, the second the number of the word on that page. So, 212-9 would mean page 212, the ninth word. Will you remember all that? If I don't, she will. She's a very educated girl. Due west, 20 candle power. One yes, two no. Ten seconds between answers. Page and word numbered in dictionary. Correct. You see, she went to college in Oslo. When does this happen? Don't ask me. I only carry the news. An Englishman in that uniform. How do you do it? Do I ask you how you catch fish? I'll not be left out of things, you hear me? Why wasn't I asked to the meeting with Hammer at Osterholm's farm? I'll make an issue of it. Look here, Gunnar. Why don't you let me in on things? Reason. I demand a reason. Should I talk to him that way? Or should I be clever? Wheel it out of him. You're wearing out your shoes. Leather is rationed, too. I'll show you. I'll show all of you. I'm not useless. You'll come to me yet, Mr. Gunnar Brugger. I'll show you how to beat the Germans. Go on up the hotel, start shooting. This is all I've got. How much? Norwegian or German money? I get paid by the Germans. 22 marks. Go up to hotel, she says. Start shooting, she says, the old. Hotel. going out to get the mail. No, thanks. Put the breakfast on the table. Would you hand me a towel? There's one on the bed. Thank you. Is there any news from the town? <clears throat> what are you doing here? What do you want? What do you want? Uh, 
I'm, I'm sorry to disturb you. I, uh, <laughs> you thought I was somebody else, didn't you? Uh, you remember me, don't you? The uh, shop and the fag. Well, what about it? Did I pay you too much or too little? Oh, no, 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 it's not that. I, uh, <laughs> I wanted to talk to someone. Someone who'd been down on the continent since I was there. I heard you were Polish. Uh, I have a cousin in Warsaw. And I thought perhaps you might be dressed. Uh, what was your cousin's name? Uh, his uh, Malkin, the same as mine. Sit down. Give me your hat. What a beautiful new one it is. Do you mind if I dress? Is there any trouble in the town? Trouble? Why should there be trouble? Tell me about your cousin. I know a great many people in Warsaw. Well, I, th I think... Uh, I, I think... Uh, was he a Pole or a Norwegian? What was his business there? Well, I... Uh, was he in Warsaw during the siege? You must not ask me questions. At least then tell me why you come to see me. I wanted you to help us. To do what? Well, I thought to see you living in this hotel with the Germans, you might have information. What kind of information? Oh, we could use all kinds of information. Like, for instance, Number of guns, where they placed, how they got a wireless. What do you want that information for? Well, you see, everybody in town thinks I'm useless. And I'm not. I thought if we could bring them in. Me? Will you help us? What makes you think I do this? What good would your filthy money do me here? You think I'm crazy enough to get mixed up in anything like this? I'm leaving here today. They promised me. Well, I don't know. I, I just thought I. Oh, you fool, you fool. Go before somebody finds you. Go, go. Do you want me to give you away? Wait a minute. How did you get in here? To the co co corridor window. Well, if you don't want to get a good beating, you better go out the same way you came. You wait here. I will go and see if there's anybody in the hall. What are you looking at? It isn't forbidden to look. For you it is, you swine. You foolish sow! Go ahead, I dare you, I dare you to hit me! You won't always be with the officers. I can wait. You will rot first! <laughs> Not bad. Teeth, too. <laughs> hey! What's your hurry? <laughs> Look, Ben. Look what came out of Katja's room. Let me out. Come on, sir. No, no, wait a minute. Here, before he dies, he's got to tell us the secret of his success with the ladies. Let me go, let me go, before I tell you what I think of you. What every honest man thinks of you. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Quiet! Quiet, everybody! All right, Grandpa, tell us. Very brave indeed, but not so brave when you're patrolling at night. I watched your face and somebody slams the door and you think it's a shot. And how do you sleep at night? Not very well, and why? Because my Norway has a fighting tradition. There was Eric the Red, there was Ibsen. You're dealing here with giants. I could have told him all those things. I didn't say a word. Fine. 
I didn't know you were coming home. He surprised us. Oh, surprise. Well, that's the best kind of a visit. I'm sorry we have to hurry. His mother is waiting. Official letter for Huffman Koenig from Berlin. Maybe we'll be lucky and they'll transfer him. Berlin has said no to my plan. They've ordered me to stay here. Now I remain nothing. Commander of a garrison. Garrison which even my own troops hate me. You weren't even listening. I was, but the boat is leaving. You will not go to the boat. All the time I was talking, you weren't listening. You kept thinking about yourself. You promised me. You are not going back. You are staying here, here in this hole like I am. You promised. You are staying. You promised. You are staying. Liar. Liar. You are staying. Liar. You are staying. Liar. Please, before someone sees me in here. Weren't you taught to knock before you enter someone's room? Please don't be angry with me. Help me. I don't know what to do. The Hoffman was quite upset with you. You hurt? Yes. You're Polish, aren't you? Yes. What are you doing here in Norway? Well, you see, at, at the time the Germans took my country, I was in Berlin on the stage. Then they, they wanted me to work in a factory. After all, they said I, I was only a Pole. I, I told them I was an actress. Then they said that before I could act anywhere again, I. I would have to prove my loyalty. And to prove it, you agreed to come to Norway. They, they promised I, I would only have to be here a little while. Now, I, I have been here almost two years. What do you want me to do about it? I thought that since you are here, Hi, officer, that maybe you would talk to the Hauptmann, get him to send me back. I am afraid to stay here any longer. What are you afraid of? Everything. The soldiers, the town. There is something going to happen here. I feel it. Only day, a, a man came up from town and wanted to know if I would help them. Did you report him? No. Why not, if you're loyal? I'm not loyal. I'm not anything. I hate them. I'll have you shot for such talk. No, you won't. I know you're not what you pretend to be. I saw you talking to those people last night. It was I who warned you. I can't risk the fate of a whole village just to help you. What must I do? You could do a lot. You could help us all. You remember the old man who came to you and asked for your help? No, no, I, I won't. Wanted me to tell you what to do? I am not going to get mixed up in anything that will get me killed. I want to get out of here alive. Are you going to speak to Hoffman Koenig for me? No. Nope. Do you want me to speak to Hoffman Koenig now, before your boat leaves? I could do it so easy. Only a word. One little word. You'll find my shirts in the top drawer. Will you bring them here?
o'clock and we're still up just like in the old days. I'd like... I'd like to make a toast. Father, Mother wants us to drink a toast. Oh, I'm sleepy. No, Martin, you're drunk. It's a fine thing. My sister's son comes home, and I am not even invited to my sister's house to welcome him. Oh, forgive me, Casper. I forgot. You see, there's so much excitement. Oh, forget it. Welcome home, Johan. Hello, Casper. <laughs> ah, this is nice. Family life. Mother, father, children, all together. <laughs> I can see now I missed a lot by never getting married. But I have Johan. Like a son, he is to me. Just like a son. Now I can settle back and take things easy. You'll help your old uncle, won't you, Johan? Well, that's why I'm here, Uncle Casper, to help you in the cannery. Casper, we were just drinking a toast. Will you join us? Now, let me see. What were we drinking to? Oh, yes. To peace. May peace come again and soon. To a free Norway. I'll drink to that. Are that any person out after curfew may be shot on sight. Well, then why don't you shoot me? Why should there be hate between us? There's such a thing as being in the war and yet outside of it. We all have our own lives. All of us, even those who have the strongest faith, would like to stop fighting. We'll fight until we push the last one of you into the sea. Perhaps what you say is true. Perhaps that will be the end. The resemblance is remarkable. Good night, Fräulein. The 56th watch. I feel like shouting out across the seas to the whole world. Hey, world, we're waiting here in Trollness. Don't forget us. Go ahead. Shout. Maybe it'll help. Tell it to be quick. I'm getting old. When my father was my age, he already had two children. What must it be like to live in a world where there are no Nazis? 
good. I might have been a German guard. At a time like this, you've no right to think of yourselves. Poor girl. She's unhappy. I would be too if I were in love with a German soldier. Have you got everything? Yes. Why don't you go home? We'll stand your watch with him. It's lonely out here. I'm sorry I was angry. Lend me your handkerchief, will you, Gunnar? Your glasses are dirty. Big fisherman of yours. Collar up, cap pulled over the eyes, face streaked with salt water. There he was, squinting dead ahead through the spray. The picture of a Viking. I never heard Gunnar so talkative. Every time the boat rolled, he'd say, We're not in your store now, eh, Malkin? And me so seasick, I was afraid I wouldn't die. <laughs> it's the same with me. It got to the point where I thought I could stand no more. And at that moment, I heard our motor stop. Are you sure this is the right spot, Gunnar? Yes, says Gunnar. I marked it yesterday on the side of the boat. <laughs> Did you have any trouble finding the sub? Uh, no. I had the good fortune to be looking in the right direction. I saw it all. First a white line of breakers, and then something like a fish in the middle. When all at once, she was up, not 50 yards away, with a lot of sailors pouring fast out of the hatch, training a light and a deck gun on us. And then we heard a voice calling. Broga, Gunnar, are you there? That was Rock. He was the first to greet us. You wanted to know when we'd deliver the arms, he said. Here's your answer. The last night in September. I knew he wouldn't forget us. He didn't. Ah, clever woman you have in Sister Gerd, he said. Kiss her for me, will you? And the beautiful Miss Densgaard, too. Now to work. I want to see what our friends sent us. I wrote down every box as the quartermaster was calling out their contents. Read it. 15,000 rounds of 50 caliber ammunition, 100 hand grenades, 300 bayonets, 300 rifles, and four light machine guns. And don't stop to count them, he said. <laughs> I don't want to say anything. We should be glad to get that much. But still, it's the old story. Four machine guns against the German army. That Osterholm, always on the gloomy side. Here, count. Feel how light that is. Does no one here remember Stockson? Sure, we remember Stocksoon. But in Stocksoon, they were betrayed by a quizzling. In Trollness, we too can be betrayed by a quizzling. Speak up, Karen. Tell them who might betray us here in Trollness. My brother.
flashlight that shot it right out of my hands. Where is it? I don't know. I shouldn't have let it. That's bad. See for yourself what ungrateful people they are. They speak of loyalty to their country. And how do they prove it? By provoking the Germans into destroying it with their plots and conspiracies. What do you want, Uncle Casper? You and I, Johan. We're the only sane ones, the only calm ones, the only smart ones. We'll come out of this all right, no matter who wins. When I came here, Uncle Casper, it was with the clear understanding that I was to be left alone. Well, I've left you alone. Well, let it continue that way. I made a mistake in Oslo. I'm not a Nazi. Why, it isn't a question of being a Nazi, Johan. It's a question of protecting what's yours. This cannery is mine now, but it'll be yours someday. Tomorrow morning, because of this nonsense on the hill, Koenig is confiscating all the fishing boats. He's afraid the villagers might use them to get arms. You know what that means, Johan? It means that our cannery will have to close. Now, wouldn't it be better if, quietly and without any fuss, uh, you could find out what they were doing on that hill? Wouldn't be hard. The villagers trust you. You could listen, ask a few questions. Well, Johan? No. no. I won't go through it again. What I went through in Oslo. And all my friends found out. What will you do, Johan? I'll go away, to some other town. All right. Let's deal in facts. One, travel in Norway is forbidden without a German visa. Two, it would be very simple for the people of Trollness to find out you were a traitor. Three, the Nazis consider you one of them. They don't like traitors either. They shoot them. See, Johan, the uh, facts speak for themselves. Uh, where'd you get this? Can you fix it, Mr. Malkin? I think it can still be used, don't you? Well, where'd you get it? I found it. Up on the plateau in the woods? Yeah. Why, is it yours? <laughs> it's lucky you found it instead of the Germans. How do you mean? Well, you see that hole? Yeah. German bullet went right through there, shot it right out of the fellow's hand. Oh, what a night, my, my back's almost broken. Hauling all those supplies from the plateau to the big ravine. From the plateau to the ravine. From the plateau to the ravine. <laughs> you word for word what Malkin said. It's not my fault. Lucky for us, Karen warned us in time. Her own brother. Maybe it wasn't such a fool's errand. Lieutenant, the following measures are to be carried out immediately. Confiscate their fishing boats, evict the schoolmaster and convert his home into a blockhouse. All restrictions on our troops are to be lifted. They are free to do in this town as they choose. There will be trouble, Herr Hauptmann. That's exactly what I want. Your son, Anna. He's a traitor. Father. It's time for her to know. No, what, Martin? He's a traitor. Ask him why. Maybe he'll tell you. Johan, you tell them the truth now. It'll be better. You tell them the truth. All right. When the Nazis came into Oslo, I had to make a decision. And I thought... You thought of yourself before you thought of Norway. Yes. That was in Oslo, but here, that day on the boat, you gave me your word. I didn't realize, Father, that once you're in, you can't get out. You can, if you're not afraid to die. Karen, if I could get out of Norway, to Sweden, England, any place, you can help me get out. You people have ways. I know you've smuggled thousands across the border. Not long ago in Trondheim, they helped a Quisling to get across the border. 
No sooner was he across than the people who'd helped him were arrested. Ten men were shot. The rest sent to a concentration camp. No, no, I wouldn't do that. You know I wouldn't. I can't tell him I wouldn't. You wouldn't want to do it, Johann. You didn't want to go back to the Nazis either. But you can't help yourself now. You're weak, Johann. Karen. Mother, I wish I could speak for him. I wish I could say to Gunnar, help my brother. I wish I hadn't been the one that had to warn them against him. Father, they'll kill me. No. No, we won't kill you. It isn't necessary to kill you. By this time, there isn't a single person in this town who doesn't know that you're a quisling. Soon, all Norway will know it. What can I do? Mother, what can I do? Oh, my boy. I don't know. of the German Army High Command, I hereby decree the immediate confiscation of all vessels. It is forbidden to leave the harbor. It is forbidden to remove any equipment from these boats. Any resistance will be crushed by military force. My name is Sixtus Anderson. I'm the schoolmaster of Trollness, retired seven years. Your men came to see me this morning. They were kind enough to offer me 48 hours to move my things. What little odds and ends I have, my bull. Yes. Hmm. You mind? Uh, what with the scarcity these days, it's been some time since I've smoked. Mm. What do you want? Mm. You? I thought it only right, considering that you are de facto commandant of the village, to acquaint you with the decision that I've made. I'm very busy. I know. I hope you'll forgive me. I know I'm being selfish. But, uh, why did you want my house? For a blockhouse. But what was it you wanted to see me about? I cannot let you have my house. You what? I must forbid you to enter my house. <laughs> <laughs> Are you insane? I could have you shot. <laughs> I know. But if you're interested, I'll tell you what brought me to my conclusion, which is, I can assure you, completely unshakable. You see, I'm well past 70, and at my age, it would be foolish for me to be like Socrates' enemies and fear death more than I love truth. Go on. I have no guns, no airplanes, no force. I disdain. Silence! What you don't understand is that the individual man... Quiet, you fool! The individual man must stand against you like a rock. Will you stop? No. If I were afraid, there might be hope for you, but I am not. There are certain things you cannot take away from me. What is mine is mine. Do you think you can stop the working of my brain and my heart? We are not animals, we are men. 
That is the foundation of law. You cannot win. Where are your courts, your judges, and your juries? Until you bring them forward, I must forbid you my house. He forbids! He forbids! I give you men 45 minutes to clear everything out of his house. Clear him out too. We have no room for philosophers. Take all of his belongings, take them to the public square and burn them as a lesson to the others. They must be taught to obey. That's an order. Stag! Arms! Dario got us. We'll catch him. <laughs> a little goat almost got away. You better throw me a rope. So you like to run, Grandfather. Go on! <laughs> After you've been here for a while, you'll get used to it. in his head that he doesn't need his books anymore. He asks us to distribute a little knowledge among all of you. Here's some knowledge for you, my friend. Let's have
Sixtus Anston for not helping you. But you see, if we had, then all our hopes... I understand. Is this why you came to see me? To explain? Yes. And the others? They've asked me to speak for them. I'm a fool, brother. We all think that you're a very brave man. Oh, still a fool. Kearney is a fool, too, but I a worse one. Thank you for coming. Each day we learn a lesson. What is the lesson for today, Stensgard? The individual cannot stand like a rock. Even a rock can be crushed. It's obvious. Tell me, Stensgard, do you think that again I prove a point? People won't stand it much longer. Soon we'll have to fight. There are some of us who won't come out of it alive. Every battle must have its dead. We've been lucky, Karen. We've had two whole years together. Time is measured differently these days. A day is a year. In a way, this war has been good to me. Because of it, I met you. We must be ready for whatever happens. The plans have got to be well laid. Tonight we'll meet in Osterholm's cellar. I'll go back and tell those inside. You notify the others and I'll meet you at my house. No, I'd better go home. It's a lonely house now. All right. I'll pick you up there. Shut that off. When the English gave us this, they told us to use it. Well, why do you have to use it here? If the Germans caught me, I'd be dead even if I had nine lives. A meeting in my cellar, guns in my cellar, and now an illegal radio in my cellar. Will you shut that off? Mr. Churchill's going to speak. 
For a week, you've been saying Mr. Churchill's going to speak. So far, all I've heard is static. All the same, Mr. Churchill is going to speak. Good evening, Holder. Is, uh... Oh, good evening, Mrs. Stensgaard. Doctor? Good evening. I came for Karen. Karen's not here. Oh, please come in. You're welcome. You know, we're about to have some tea. We could sit, talk a while. Hold up. No, thank you, Mrs. Stensgaard. I haven't got much time. I left Karen about an hour ago. She was going to meet me here, and we were going on together to Osterholm's. An hour ago? Well, then perhaps you better go and find oh, out. Oh, no, no, no. She's probably stopped someplace to visit, perhaps with Gerd, and went on with her. We're holding a meeting, Doctor, in Osterholm's cellar. We'd like you there to help us plan. Me? Yes. I'll wait for you if you like. Oh, no, 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 you go ahead, you go on. All right, you know where we are if you change your mind. Good evening, good evening, Mrs. Stanford. Martin, you go. Go on with them, your heart's with them, I know it is. I knew it this afternoon when you stood in the square and you sang. And I knew it here all evening when you were silent. I knew what was on your mind, what was in your tongue. Martin, I want you to go with him. Now there's your hat, your cane. Doctor should always look at best. I'll go and look for Gunnar. That's all we need. Somebody to go out to look for someone else. You shouldn't have let Gunnar go out. He was here. He should have stayed here. Then why didn't you try to stop him? To here. Now will you turn that off? Dr. Stensgaard. I brought my wife. I hope you don't mind. You're both welcome. Dr. Stensgaard, this is your chair. Thank you. Mrs. Stensgaard, will you sit here? You're expecting him to come? Why, yes. Oh, thank you. But my daughter and Gunnar Broga, they were supposed to be here. Yes, we're expecting them. They're, they're a little late. It's raining. Yes. Oh, that pretty shawl you've got on. Did you make that? Yes. Don't you think it would be a good idea for you to turn the radio on? What you said. Mr. Churchill's going to speak. She's not here. Gunnar. I've looked everywhere, every house, every street. When you came to my house, you told me she'd gone ahead with Gerd. I remember quite clearly. You'd all better go. Leave us alone. No. We... Let them hear. Let them all hear. <laughs> I know the man. I know him. Guna, if you think that now is the time to fight, we fight. Everything we hoped for, struggled for, just to be revenged. 
Let's go now all over Europe. This happens to many. They go on. Happened to you. That's all I know. That's all I want to know. I didn't have to tell you. I could have kept it from you. They killed Gerd's father, Solvig's husband. Why am I any different to them? Why am I? I'm human. Is there a man in Norway who wouldn't kill for this? Yes, there is such a man. Gunnar Broga. Gunnar Broga is our leader. The people of Trollness trust him. There's still a chance for them to win if he doesn't throw it away. He said himself, in these times, we must be like steel. Like steel. Were they just words, Gunnar? words for such a thing as this. When you put flame to the tip of a harpoon to temper it, even the hardest steel melts if the flame is too hot. I was full of such a flame. Karen is right. We'll not fight now. These things are not forgotten. They're written down in books. In days to come, people will say there were giants here in Trollness. We came here tonight to learn our plan of battle. What is it, Gunnar? You're our leader. From now on, every one of us must be a leader. I'll draw you the plan here. Remember it. Remember it well. That is symbolism. And that is the message of the Atlantic meeting. Do not despair, brave Norwegians. Your land shall be cleansed. Not only from the invader, but from the filthy quislings who are his tools. Yield not an inch. had been brutally assassinated. We're in a foreign land, surrounded by enemies, by a civilian population of thieves and assassins. But the fatherland stands with us. I want you to remember, the honor of the third right lies in your hands. No man shall die unavenged. There stands the self-confessed assassin, the depraved product of a degenerate democracy, that a man like that could have such a son. But the life of one Norwegian is not payment enough for the life of a German soldier. As an example to the rest of the population, every one of their leaders will be shot tomorrow morning at 7 o'clock in the public square. Their bodies will be buried there and their graves will serve as a reminder to slave populations that there must be complete submission to the master race. They will dig their own graves.
father. Oh, I saw their faces. I had to kill. I had to. If it hadn't been you, somebody else would have done it. The noose was drawn too tight around our necks. You will see, Togas. From now on, this will be a peaceful village. I hope so. Oh, God. If this suffering must be, bless those that serve thee and want only freedom. But whatsoever thou decidest, may thy will be done. Well, Mr. Togerson, I think it is time. Lieutenant, proceed. Lay down your shovels. If they don't stop with a lot of fire, the execution will proceed. This time, Kenning's guns won't stop them. This time, none of them are afraid to die. Come, they have arms. Dispatch reinforcements to all posts immediately. Hold sufficient force to protect hotel in case they break through. were that women and children should stay under cover until we get to the boats. The order was that women with children get under cover. I fight. Excuse me. How about detachment? How about detachment? This is Hopper Koenig. Revolt. They've got arms. They will break through to the boats. <laughs> Room. 
Blockhaus. Blockhaus, Blockhaus. Nächstes Hopf von Koenig. Blockhaus, Blockhaus. Blockhaus, 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 will you answer, Corporal? Your Corporal is dead. We're coming up to get you next. Free Norway! Hover detachment. Hover detachment. Hover detachment. Hover detachment. Yes, yes, this is the harbor detachment, the Norwegian harbor detachment. If you want to ride to England with the women and children, come down here. We're saving a place for you. Place machine guns in the woods east and west of the hotel. When that rival advances across the clearing, wipe them out with the crossfire. Yes, sir. Is this what you wanted? Thank you. Here's the rest of your instruments, Tops. Guns are placed, sir. The enemy is heading this way. There are many of them. Radio to Trondheim. Tell them I want planes. It means our radio is dead. But they'll never get to beyond the clearing. The machine guns and the flanks will cut them down. You don't know. You didn't see them. They kept coming and coming. Check the east wing. Our outposts have been wiped out. The radio is dead. We are cut off from the outside. If we succeed in holding this hotel until 4 o'clock, until the patrol plane flies over Trollness, we'll be able to communicate with the outside. We'll get reinforcements. We are German soldiers. Soldiers of our Führer. These are rebel. They must not win. They cannot win. Heil Hitler! Heil Hitler! <laughs> Leave me alone! I want to make a speech to the German army. I have ordered you to your room. To the invincible German army. To the master race. To the conquerors of the world. To Hauptmann Koenig, the father of the Koenig clan. <laughs> You're frightened. You, remove the body, then report down here. You will take care of the wounded. Now remember, as soon as you get out of the woods, spread out so that you won't make good targets. Walk, slowly, don't fire until they do, then charge. Keep our surprises for them until later. We've got to get this over with before their four o'clock patrol plane checks the town. Goodbye, Gunnar. We've said goodbye before. We're still alive. Just in case, when this is over, one of us is not around and the other gets to England. Only the women, the children, and the wounded will get to England. But I thought your plan was for the rest of us to follow them. No, we stay here. These fascists will never drive Norwegians out of Norway. Those of us who come out of this alive will take to the hills. Fight on from there until we drive them out. Corporal, 
Hold your fire until I order it. The crossfire from the machine guns I've placed on our flanks must not fail. Guns. We need all I've got and more. Why aren't they firing, Guna? Where are they? Lars, you cover the left. You've got to get behind the German machine guns, do you understand? The rest of us will charge just as soon as we hear your fire.
tell you, Giants! Stop me from saying it now! Stop me! Go up to the hotel, she said. Start shooting, she said. The town of Trollis on October 28, 1942. Thorough investigation disclosed the fact that no one was left alive on either side. Former German garrison, commanded by Alpen Kinnick, evidently fought a battle of annihilation with the people of Trollis. At this, Hoffman Kinnick died a hero's death for the Führer and the Reich. The town of Tolnitz is once again flying the German flag. One of their soldiers is sending up the German flag. anyone who still wonders why this war is being fought, let him look to Norway. If there is anyone who has any delusions that this war could have been averted, let him look to Norway. And if there is anyone who doubts of the democratic will to win, again I say, let him look to Norway. Uh -huh. 